Welcome to the Challenger ATD review, one of the most played vehicles in the game, in both PvP, Glops, and PvE. And uh, it's not really difficult to tell why. It has a 140mm cannon with Hess shells that really screw people up and do absolutely massive module damage. You will be able to one shot people in some cases, crew kill or even blow up hammer racks. And the AP shells themselves, when combined with commanders such as Victor, will also allow you to pop people's Amorax as well. It has the highest frontal armor in game, combined uh, with only its tier 9 challenger and the Type 99A2 even coming close. It has ERA plastered literally everywhere. And it doesn't really have that many weak spots, except for perhaps a small green part on the lower plate and some green parts on the shoulders. Apart from that, it's only really vulnerable to extremely high penetration rounds such as the Amata 152, the Alt-8 and the Leopard 2 AX. And maybe some of the more high penetration missiles in game as well. Let's have a look at what you get. So at the first staff, you get the ATU armor package, which is exactly the same armor package the Tier 9 Challenger gets. A spore liner which will increase hit points by 250, but it doesn't really matter that much. You also get smoke grenades, a APS system, gun stabilizer, more AP shells, better hair shells and an improved loading mechanism and of course off-road suspension. The first thing you want to do is go straight for this line. Um, the cannon originally comes with 720 penetration which is mostly pathetic for tier 10 and will mean that you will struggle, massively struggle to be on, a, to be on an even fight with other tier 10s including yourself. So that is a must. The improved gun stabilizer doesn't really matter that much, but the prototype AP shells, the HES shells, and the improved lo loading mechanism do definitely. Lastly, better smoke grenades and the Iron Fist active, active protection system will help versus missiles. And then you can go for the improved suspension and a spore liner. And of course, a universal retrofit slot as well. Uh, crew skills wise, um, you're probably likely to go most for off road driving and, and for field repair as this is a very big and very slow and very unwieldy tank so you want to get as much ease as you can and a field repair will mean that when people do track you, you'll also have some ability to not be perma-tracked. Gunner skills wise, as said before, this is a very big tank so you probably will want to go for preventive maintenance and quick draw and load a good stock of AP shells and HES shells. The HES shells do actually um, work on tier 10 and the AP shells are usually intended for other challenges and of course at long ranges and when you are unable to use the HES shells in some circumstances. As usual, surplus part crates, first aid cabinet and improved fire extinguisher, and lastly an improved pioneer toolkit, improved gun breach, filter systems and ballistic computer. However, considering how many issues this thing can have with this, with, with this accuracy, you could always take off the um, filter system and, is, and instead go for an advanced MRS which reduces the aim, aiming circle by 10%. Commanders wise, there's roughly a choice of three in the game with a fourth possible. Victor will allow you to do a ridiculous amount of module damage and of course after receiving damage will bump your reload time by down by 10%. Should get you to around 8 seconds for reload time for an emergency situation. Module damage is insane and the crew damage as well means that when your hash shells hit somebody and they penetrate, the enemy is going to have a very hard time and you also get some acceleration bonuses as well. And of course, like I said before, it also means the AP shells will also, more often than not, deal a knockout blow to modules as well. Apart from that, if you don't want to go for um, damage, uh, for module damage, you could always go for Cortez, who will always give you max damage. This basically turns you into hitting for a truck, but also means that you lose the bonuses of all that module damage, so that's up to you really. And lastly, if you want to go for the fastest possible aim time, then you could always use Rachel who in the end will reduce your reload speed by 6.45% by per enemy within 50 meters. Reload speed is increased by 6% after destroying a module and reload speed increased by 2.2% if an enemy is within 50 meters. It means that in your end you'll be able to get a roughly 
9% reload speed increase per enemy within 50 meters and an additional 16% means that you'll get 15% if there's one tank and you kill its module. Which for a tank with a very slow reload time is absolutely amazing. And then last but not least you can use Gaia who gives you some bonuses but I wouldn't really recommend it. As you can see here he's more of a commander that's made for Merkavas than anything else really. Um, let me just put Victor on again. So compared to all of the other MBTs in its tier uh, we're going to go for viable MBTs such as these guys. The 99A2 and of course the Exxon 1A3. As you can see here, the ATDU has the lowest DPM in its tier, however, it has massively high damage, being only beaten out by the 99140 and the Amata 152. Um, this means that if you're able to trade shots with just about everybody else, you're golden. However, the Amata, the Merkava, and the Exxon 103, when equipped with the 120mm, will be able to permatrack you and will be able to eventually out DPM you, so keep those shots going. As you can see here, a reload time of 9.92 is absolutely awful, but you do have an incredible hit point capacity of 4,450, which, if you seriously want to tank, um, you could always choose Alicia, who will bump that defense up to, god, how much? Hopefully it will actually show in the module stats. Okay, um, it doesn't, but it will bump you up to roughly around 5,000 hit points. So, as said before, it also has extremely low penetration in its tier, and I will quickly swap out the XM1 for the 120. As that's what you should be using in PvP. one of course on the highest DPM in its tier but as you can see here its hit points is only beaten out slightly by the Merkava with the rest having 10,000 or less. Um, it however also has the lowest camo range but pretty decent view on the move for 440 is okay. Um, its gun depression is relatively okay but, but it is the only regular tier 10 MBT to have hydromatic suspension which most of the time will mean you'll be able to, hi to hide your lower plate and its maximum deviation actually sucks so you will find yourself um, missing shots into players weak spots and of course the turret traverse can be a little bit unwieldy at times. Uh, protection system wise um, which is the biggest thing with this tank we'll have a look at this first then we'll have a look at some others um, as you can see here it has some very tiny weak spots but ultimately it comes down to shooting the lower plate of the Challenger, which is actually quite thin, but when it's using its Hydromax suspension and hiding behind obstacles, it can be a very, deep, very, very difficult target to take out. Um, let's quickly go to the Leopard 2AX, which is usually the vehicle that will be giving you quite a few problems. As you can see here, the 900 heat pen means you'll be able to pen you pretty well. Um, with the Marta and the Alte also being able to penetrate your lower plate on a consistent basis as well. Could go back to the challenger and of course when fighting challenger on challenger if you remember the weak spots you can go for these side armor plates here which are quite small but if you hit them it's good and I also want to draw attention to the fact that the challenger does have issues um, this top part of the gun of the shell here being actually quite weak to other targets um, with the ammo rack being in this side here and since it's not a blow out storage panel you can see an ATU being blown up so if you're using missiles, hair shells or otherwise aim for this part here but otherwise the challenger does have a pretty weak turret so you, so you can at least ammo rack it and block the guy's gun for a while and also possibly make him shit himself. Against other MBTs in the same tier um, the hair shells can actually be either devastating or completely useless for instance, um, Altes, the lower plate is very weak, so Hess shell. Same goes for the Black Eagle. Um, 
The Leopard 2AX can also be penetrated in the lower plate with her shells as well. The Merkava, however, usually they'll give you the most problem as they do have that ready rack and a very good slug of hit points. And of course you can penetrate them with AP, with Hesh not so much, but the, but the turret sheets can be penetrated and of course shoot for the left side because that's where the ammo rack is. And of course if you get them in the side, that Merkav is going to have problems. Um, something else I wanted to touch on was tanks like the Amata, which I don't want to paint. As you can see here, you can actually penetrate it with Hesh in the lower in the low, in the lower turret, but if you can, or at least get to the side of them, with Hesh shells and with the 140, you can seriously ruin an Amata's day by shooting it in the side in this place here, and it will almost always result in an Amarak. And lastly, with tanks such as the XM1A3, um, it can actually get quite interesting when fighting against them, as... You will be able to go through the upper front plate as it's quite thin which it's actually more preferable to use hash against x one three simply because the gap there can actually be quite a problem and also the fact if the guy blocks his um points his gun down you also have issues as well so that's that overall the atgu is one of the vehicles that is used most in mostly in um just about every single mode really it's one of the more powerful tier 10s at the moment being roughly on the equal level that the alte and t14 amata is along with the type 19 and 140 it's heavily armored it's got a lot of hit points it's got a massive punch um however it's most use is usually in pve where you'll find these things running around in spec ops platoons most of the time to complete achievements simply because the bots have so many issues with taking them out and the fact that these things can hash pollens, pollen balls in the front and also amarack them is quite a good thing. So, let's have a look at some games. So, gameplay wise, when using the Challenger 2 AGU, most of the time in just about any game mode, is you should always be leading the charge. This is a knight with a shield in one hand and a big fuck off sword in the other. You have a lot of hit points, you have a lot of armor, that is your shield. And your sword is your giant ass cannon. If you snipe in this thing, you're not doing it right. So basically for the normal part of this map, I've basically been abandoned by a good part of my team for the first part. So um, naturally speaking, while I wouldn't mind going hold down around these places here, if I let the enemy take this part, they've won. So I'm gonna proceed to this hill and I'm gonna go hold down and I'm gonna try and hold them off for as long as I can. I'm using Victor here and for the most part here, um, I'm going to be using AP as I'm in a hold down situation with other tanks and things can get a little bit un uninteresting. For now, do you remember what I said about using Victor? I'm uh, I'm going to aim for the Amarag on this um, Amata as you can see here and boom. Yeah, that's the 140 AP shell combined with Victor. Unfortunately, that challenger over there should have had, had Hesh loaded, otherwise he would have really hit me. But, as you can see here, he, prob he probably wasn't using Victor, because if he did, I likely would have seriously suffered something else other than a other than damaged engine. As you can see there, using that Amarak basically pushed me to doing a third of the total damage I did this game in one hit, which is absolutely excellent. So, fighting challenger on challenger, I could have used... Um, Pish to go up against the shoulder plates um, and as you're going to see here I'm actually going to end up having to go straight for the lower plate. ATU on ADU can have issues as they're both slow, they're both fat and they both have massive, massive issues really. Um, as you can see there we have the Challenger 2 ATU who's also sniping on the T90MS. The T90MS should be sniping, that Charlie should be with me. but. At least we do have some cover now. And since I've taken point here, I am the one that is physically stopping the enemy team from going hold down and killing the rest of ours. Fortunately, I did bounce on that mark, and I do have a very long reload time. Um, on the bright side here, having such a large amount of hit points means that it will take a lot of fire to take a challenger down. Unfortunately, another bounce on this guy isn't good. And you'll also see the enemy, um, when it comes to killing a challenger, in this case of scenario, your best, your, the best thing you can do is swarm it, basically. 
I've now got a Sentero firing at me, and those guys should have been immediately moving up to kill me. Um, unfortunately, they're not exactly particularly smart, and I do actually end up hitting that Charlie in the lower plane. However, I've taken an absolute ton of hits now, and the <sighs> shells can have issues with penetrating tier 9, such as the M1A1C. Um, it doesn't have the standard 800 pen that tier 10s do, which means that it will have issues. Um, another side note here is that if I was using Alicia, I'd be on around 1000 hit points now, instead of 400. Um, and for now, I'm actually going to start putting this thing into um, hydraulic suspension mode, which will mean that my weak spot for the most part will be actually covered. However, it does make this tank very slow, but that hydraulic suspension can allow you to basically crouch behind obstacles and protect your very vulnerable lower plate. A side note for the most part is that uh, auto cannon vehicles in the game can have issues penetrating your sides, they're quite heavily armoured, they will go through your turret however, um, and but high explosive from auto cannon shells will be able to go through your engine deck. So keep that in mind mostly. Um, for now as you can see here we basically mostly won this game, um, unfortunately uh, I did get a little bit paranoid on what to do here, but at the very least I have actually done a ton of spotting damage here, which is all good, but I'm going to have to back away from this Merkava now, I don't really particularly want him to hit me. Another 874 done to him, if I was using Cortez I would have rolled around 900, 950 on most of my shells, but it would have mean that I maybe I wouldn't have been able to take out that Amata at the start, so there's a lot of choices to be done here. If I was using um, my Hess shells, I would have been able to go through that Alte and maybe Amarak him. But this is a pretty decent game to eventually have. Uh, 6,100 damage done, and we'll have a quick look at how it went. But I hope that at least proves that you should always be taking point with the AGTU. It is not a tank for sniping, it is a tank that needs to get in its enemy's face, because then you'll be able to hit those weak spots with your Hess shells. And it means the enemy will also have a harder time hitting your weak spots if you're constantly moving and you're constantly using that hydromatic suspension to crouch behind obstacles. This is a very, very, very difficult tank to shift. And of course we'll have a look at the um, in-game in results when we um, get there. When the game loads. Come on, AW. <sighs> yeah, it does. It does really tend to have issues when uh, All right, I'm gonna quickly log out of the game and then log back in. Anyway, after shutting the game off again, um, we're here, so let's have a look how that game went. I got a Scout's Crest from taking point, obviously, um, which meant that I got rewarded a shit ton of credits. In the end, I did 13,199 spotting damage with an average of one shot done to each of these guys, and of course the Mamata was told to eat a dick with some additional damage done to that challenger, which was one shot and another one to kill him. Unsurprisingly, I got the top of the um, the game. I uh, don't think anybody's managed to do that much spotting damage in a challenger before. In fact, even AFEs would be blushing at how good that is. Um, a bunch of shots fired and one miss. However, a bunch of them bounced, which as you can see there, the total potential damage was 11,000. Um, which is okay, total assist damage being at 13,000, but the damage blocked was 8,833, which is pretty damn good as well, uh, with about 2-3 to three shots being blocked by the APS, however most of it being done by non-penetrating hits. Pretty decent game. So that was in a defensive position, let's see how the ATDU does an attack. So this was more the uh, attack based game I was talking about. There are times in the ADDU where you will have to take shots, where you will have to push up, and this is going to be one of those times. I aim for the ADDU's lower plate at, at this point, of course. Um, and right now, this tank is going to be the only one that can push up, really. 
The XM1A3 doesn't have the armor, it's going to get its hole punch. The Yamato has a weak lower plate. And I also have the hit points to do this as well. So push up and keep going. If you have to take a hit, you have to. You have a ton of hit points, as has been said multiple times. And fortunately, as you can see what's happening to Alpen Vibes there, he's starting to learn that. Yeah. I should have been the one taking that hit for him. So, um, we did actually lose our Amata when he cliff died off the hill. And, um, this game was actually lost for us as the majority of our team mostly abandoned it, but hey, ramming tanks is fun. And while you do have a very highly damaging gun, that does not mean that you can't secure kills. You have to shoot them even if they're going to be a one shot, even if they're going to be like two thirds, one third of your total damage output. You have to kill them. And if you have to, you have to. Um, unfortunately, at this point in the game, we have lost. Um, but I am very confident that at least my push there allowed us to get something back from the game. 938 done to that T14. Um, I haven't actually loaded Hess shells yet. Um, I don't think I actually played a game with them on simply because too many heavy tanks and I don't particularly want to do, which is a normal thing which people with Hesh do, which is they spend too much time aiming at weak spots and they don't really spend enough actually firing and doing damage. So while you can do damage to those Hesh shells, if you're taking too long, it's wasted damage. Another 960 shot to that guy there. Unfortunately for now, I do end up having a K21 shoot me. I believe he shot me there, which would make a degree of sense. The commander has been injured. So there are a bunch of um, weak spots and stuff. Unfortunately, I did actually get KP. KP wasn't able to do the damage. Sorry about that. And for this game, really, that's all she wrote. Uh, it can be difficult to play the Challenger 2 ATU, unfortunately. Um, the tank does have its issues. It's slow, it has... It can be often very much overtaken by the game, by the team, and you will get left behind to and basically forced to fend for yourself. But the drawbacks for that is a tank which has incredible damage potential, a ridiculous amount of armor and hit points and as you can see there from that little push instead of being killed by those guys and being penned in and boxed in uh, we did break out and I did get to do 6,479 which is a good amount of damage really a uh, third on the team and a uh, not that much wasted damage either we're bouncing, eventually bouncing 10,000 mitigated damage which shows you that this thing is really good at doing stuff Closing statements for the ATTU is that this is not a sniper tank, this is not a coward camper tank, this is not something that you can stay back with. In order to use this thing properly you have to push, you have to get into people's faces, you have to make them panic shot. And for all of that you get one of the most powerful tanks in the game. I give it one cup of tea over 400 colonial countries and I hope the queen herself is watching this. So before guys, remember to like and subscribe. The next review we have coming up is the Leopard 2A6, I believe, on Sunday with the Merc of a 2D review being next Wednesday in a week. After that, um, you will be able to vote on next week's tanks with the Leopard 2A6, which is always good, all the, stream, all the PvP streams before that. And like I said, like and subscribe for more stuff coming up, more rewards, more videos, more streams, always good, always good stuff. And lastly, donation link below I'd like to help support me with everything I do uh, at the moment I'm trying to get around 100 bucks together with 30 bucks of the way there um, for airport transport there and back as unfortunately I had to lose half of my bank account so I'm actually kind of in red at the moment but anyway for now I hope you enjoyed this review and for that hilarious scouts crest it happens so for now take care everyone and I'll see you all next time and of course for tonight's stream PVE, be there, have fun. See you all next time.